about Kelly's interest in young girls almost from the moment he became a superstar over nearly a decade ago. Among those was that he cruised fast food spots in his hometown of Chicago, like this rock and roll McDonald's to pick up young girls. John Norris picks up the story. Prosecutors in Chicago will argue that the sex tape at the center of the R. Kelly criminal case was made sometime in 1998 or 1999. But they're likely to claim that Kelly's alleged affinity for young girls hardly started then. Attempting to establish a pattern of behavior could well be another pillar of their case. The DA is sure to introduce the best-known example of Kelly romancing a minor, a high-profile hookup which occurred a decade ago. In 1994, Kelly married this young girl, the late Aaliyah Houghton. Though the singer was just 15 years old at the time, Kelly claimed she was 18 on the marriage certificate. Was there any truth to your marriage or was that just... Well, I will answer the question for people who want to know I am not married. Were you ever or... Well, I'm not going to really add fuel to the fire. With the intervention of her parents, the Aaliyah marriage was soon annulled. That was a whole nother situation, a whole nother time. It was a, it was, it was a whole nother, whole nother thing. And I'm sure that people also know that. Prosecutors may contend that far from being a unique situation, the Aaliyah relationship was consistent with a pattern of Kelly sexually exploiting young females harboring dreams of stardom. 1991. That's the year when, according to a civil suit filed years later, Kelly began having sex with a 15-year-old student after visiting her choir class at Chicago's Kenwood Academy. 1998. The R&B singer is accused in a second civil suit of picking up another high school student. She was 16 and on a prom date at that rock and roll McDonald's. A year later, the suit says, Kelly got her pregnant and then coerced her to have an abortion. 2000. Then just 17, a former record company intern says that's when she met Kelly and began having sex with him. By April of 2002, only two months after the sex tape surfaced, all three women had filed civil suits against R. Kelly, claiming criminal sexual conduct. All reportedly settled their cases out of court, and all are on the prosecution's witness list. Attorney Susan Loggins represented them. I'm on that witness list as well, and they haven't made any contact whatsoever to arrange for the presence of our girls in the courtroom. It's likely that testimony from Loggins' clients would bolster the prosecution's case against R. Kelly, but it's unlikely that the jury will ever hear from them. A judge will, in a criminal trial will normally bar the jury from hearing anything regarding a civil suit settlement if the prosecution wants to bring it out. If the defense is smart, they are going to fight tooth and nail to keep that information out in front of this jury. Imagine if the jury hears that on at least two separate other occasions he has settled lawsuits with women who claim that he had sex with them when they were underage. That is powerful evidence to suggest if he's done it before, he's doing it again. In the off chance that the judge does allow that testimony, the girls who reportedly accepted those out-of-court settlements may face questions of credibility. As a defense attorney, I would point out to a jury that this witness's primary concern and primary motive is financial, having nothing to do with feeling victimized or wanting justice. But there is one woman who did not settle her case, at least not yet. Her name is Tina Woods. At the time Woods appeared having sex on a videotape, she was 33 and having consensual sex. What she claims she didn't know and never agreed to was Kelly filming their tryst. She's suing him for invasion of privacy. In the, Press for one. the current owners of Kelly's Chicago mansion, who are on the witness list, told MTV News they found hidden cameras throughout the house, including the Colorado room the same room that is allegedly at the heart of the child pornography charges. For that reason, the prosecution could be expected to use both Tina Wood's testimony as well as statements from the current owners of the Kelly mansion to try and establish R. Kelly's alleged habit of documenting his sexual affairs. Until March, Chicago's DA could have looked outside the state for more examples of Kelly's alleged pattern of behavior. Florida detectives raided one of Kelly's homes in 2002 and stumbled upon a digital camera with nude images. According to Florida police, those images showed Kelly having sex with an underage girl.
But those Florida images were obtained without a proper search warrant, and the new charges of child pornography were dropped. As a result, the pictures on that digital camera will play no role in the Chicago trial. The prosecution in this case, one of the problems it's having is that if anybody is following the case, you're watching the case just dwindle down. Indeed, momentum might appear to be on R. Kelly's side, with a third of the charges in Chicago being dropped as well. You've seen Chicago drop several of the counts against him, and yet the system here is saying, but we will proceed. And the game isn't over yet. When we come back, how jury selection can make or break the case against R. Kelly. If he's guilty, he's over. You don't want to see the white man get him. Kelly immediately denied he was the man on the tape. I'm not a guy that would do this, what people are saying. But at the same time that R. Kelly was issued, some swiftly rendered.